industry. Data science is one of the high in demand IT skill in 2021 with an average salary of $100,000 per annum. There is a need for over 2 lakh data scientists in the USA alone by the next year. And moreover, data science industry is expected to touch $16 billion mark by 2025. The wide adoption of the platform has encouraged many students to learn about it deeply. According to the Economic Times, the jobs in data science have grown up to 400 in the last few years. Keeping all these things in mind, we have prepared this session to help you to learn data science fundamentals, career benefits, in-demand skills, average salaries, and tips to crack interviews. Before we start this session, don't forget to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to never miss any video of Roma Campus. Hi everyone, welcome to the demo of data science. I will briefly walk you through various aspects of data science, starting from technology, its need, its content, and um, as a part of the data science curriculum, what all things we cover along with projects and details. So starting with, let me briefly tell you about myself. So I am Gaurav Prakash, currently working as an associate product manager in the space of artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, and blockchain with Edsil. And I have an experience of more than eight to nine years in this domain. Um, in, in the data science space, uh, um, both in terms of business intelligence, data analytics, as well as high-end uh, image processing and NLP implementation. Academically, I am an engineering graduate and also an MBA in marketing and analytics. And currently, I'm also associated with Chroma as a uh, data science facilitator, where I teach students uh, each and every aspect of data science, starting from basic Python to end-to-end -end, um, deep learning-based implementation. Now talking about data science, uh, if I talk about everything which you see around out of 10 things, six to eight are such things where one or the other way, either data related activity or machine learning or deep learning is involved. So uh, if I talk about these examples, which you see either it is a uh, gesture recognition system or, or uh, recommendation systems based out of Amazon or a recommendation systems based out of uh, Netflix or um, um, speech speech AI based on uh, example, Google Assist or Siri, or Facebook advertisement, or moment recognition in, in your AR VR systems for gaming industry, or a facial recognition. Everything is some or the other way related to data science at background, some or the other machine learning models, deep learning models, or even a basic data analysis system is running. So, so, the so the reason behind data science being so hype is that almost everything which you see around, most of the things, things have some or the other way, one or the other things of data science involved in it. Talking further in this direction, so if I uh, talk about uh, uh, the major uh, reason for data science being so important that if we talk about the amount of data generated Till 2005, from the start of uh, human civilization, it is around 130 exabyte of data. Uh, with this, I mean each and everything is handwritten text or someone has spoken something or um, uh, some data has been collected, Excel file, everything if I include starting from the dawn of human civilization till 2005, around one exa one, uh, 30 exabytes of data has been created. But if we see the recent trend, let me walk you through the recent trend. You can see starting from 2010 to 2020, the prediction is that uh, I talked about 2005 where we had 130 exabytes of data. And you can see here around 2020, it is expected that we will have 40,000 of uh, 40,000 exabytes of data. So, so it is almost more than 50 fold growth in just a span of 15 years. And to analyze that data, it is not possible for any human uh, to analyze this data uh, and understand what this data convey. If we talk about the amount of data scientists available currently, they will be able to analyze somewhere around 5,000 uh, 5, exabytes of data, but the amount of data which we have currently is more than 40,000 exabytes of data. And there the concept of machine learning, machines learning from the data themselves comes in and the importance of data science and artificial intelligence as a subject of study arises. Please make sure you like our video and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss any notification by us for any further videos. Talking further uh, in this direction, uh, 
there, there is a there is always a gap of understanding on what is actually data science what is actually artificial intelligence what is actually machine learning what is actually deep learning so this is a very nice venn diagram which i always love to explain my students that uh, data science is more about understanding data this is more about exploration of data or exploratory data analysis or more of a descriptive statistics where you understand from data where you try to figure out what the data says but when you come uh, in the domain of artificial intelligence it is more about enabling computer to think so you have some data computer tries to learn learn from there so by computer i mean some sort of algorithm some sort of program which actually tries to learn from data and gives you some output out of it so maybe um, you actually uh, uh, learn patterns from data and you are able to forecast the future so that is the area of artificial intelligence where uh, beyond just giving you uh, information about the data it also enables you to use that data to forecast the future to do something which is unknown that is the space of artificial intelligence specifically machine learning or deep learning uh, and, and this is how things are related data science is is a a space which talks about understanding data that involves some of the machine learning techniques some of the deep learning techniques that enables you to forecast things that enables you to understand things and artificial intelligence as a whole is something which enables you to uh, design systems which which can think like human which involves machine learning which involves deep learning and and the key to this is statistics so whatever we discuss in data science whatever we discuss in artificial intelligence whatever we discuss in machine learning or deep learning which is which is more co close to the way humans learn everything revolves around statistics the core of this is mathematics and statistics and hence if you study data science it is very necessary for you to first study statistics at least the base statistics which will enable you to actually understand how things are happening at background and obviously if, if if we talk about implementing things on computer you need to have a basic understanding of computer science at a more focus level uh, in terms of programming so you should know at least one programming language which enables you to implement these things so there are multiple programming languages via which this could be implemented there is python there is r there is scala there is sweka however if we talk about the most demanding language in which people want to implement data science that is certainly python i'll show you how Uh, is the demand in market currently when it comes to implementing uh, data science or implement, implementing artificial intelligence um, using various languages this is a whole plethora of uh, tools and technologies which which uh, people talk about this is not limited to what i have written here but these are some of the most important ones which people talk about and uh, which is used so as a part of our curriculum we always want to cover at least one or two in each of the Uh, part so for example if we talk about software as a service google machine learning platform is there uh, if we talk about uh, basic formatter so so pandas is a very powerful library which normally people use uh, uh, implement using python python as a programming language is, is very famous for data science r is also very famous scala is also very known and even people have started implementing data science using java when we talk about frameworks for deep learning tensorflow is a very very powerful framework which has enabled people to implement end to end data science um, or end to end uh, machine learning models starting from building models to deploying models in a production environment similarly we have scikit learn which enables us to do machine learning which which are the classical data science techniques and in terms of tools tableau is a very powerful tool which enables you to do visualization it is similar to excel but very advanced from excel then you have jupiter which enables you to write python codes and then do graphical analysis or build model using jupiter r studio is more of a r based programming studio which enables you to write or build models using r quick view is similar to tableau is used for uh, visualization technique and similarly from platforms you have apache spark and hadoop which gives you a platform for this whole data analysis so as a part of a curriculum we try to cover uh, some of the key techniques at least in in every space so that you are aware on what uh, is the current things happening and and um, you know almost uh, uh, one or two tools in each and every uh, space of data science now as i told earlier if we talk about the market demand so this is a research uh, this is a survey of glassdoor and the maximum job posting in in data science skills is python so everyone thinks that if you know data science you must know python then we have r and then everything comes post that 
So talk about the current trend. A uh, Python is one of the most powerful language. Be, on top of which people try to study data science. And um, as per my understanding, so data science, as I told earlier, is is more mathematics, is more statistics, and you need to implement those tools and techniques using any of the language. So Tableau is not a language; it is more of a, a tool which enables you exploratory data analysis. MATLAB is more tool which or, or more of a language which enables you to do some machine learning so these are one or the other language or tools which enables you to do some part of data science but python are these are some powerful languages which actually enables you to do everything in data science and um, the most demanded one is python so from uh, from our curriculum perspective also we teach students uh, to do data science using python if someone is interested to do things on r they can go ahead but from our curriculum perspective we try to implement things based out of python because of the market uh, demand and how things are demanded in the market so if i talk about the uh, job perspective in the market if you see the average salary of a application developer in india is somewhere around 5 lakh so i am talking about average so did this is like people getting a, a salary as low as uh, 1 lakh 20 thousand a uh, per year to people getting a salary of some 40 lakh 50 lakhs uh, per year so the average overs around 5 lakhs when we talk about application developers but when we talk about data science roles the average overs around 8 lakhs so you can see there is a good amount of uh, difference in salary just because data science is a niche skill very few people know about it and companies are ready to pay you uh, for this even if we talk about the starting job role of data science, so a starting data scientist somewhere around gets a salary of six lakhs or even five lakhs or even seven lakhs. So this is an average of the entry level data science. But if I talk about the average of a normal developer, it will range around three lakhs or, or 3.5 lakhs. So because of this niche skill and very few people know, companies are actually ready to pay you premium out of it. Now there are various job roles which hover around this whole domain. You could work as a data engineer who is more focused uh, in preparing the data for data science. You can work as an AI engineer who is more uh, working in the domain of deep learning and machine learning or where uh, you enable computers to behave like human or you could work as a data scientist, which is an end-to-end -end role starting from data analysis to model building to deployment. Or in the uh, domain of sales, pre-sales, you can work also as an ML engineer, as a data analyst, as a product manager, as an analytics consultant. So there are a wide variety of roles which are offered uh, to people based on the skill set. So a product manager is, is a more in role of data science as well as a product management where he designs end-to-end -end prod products related to this. Uh, data scientist is more focused in the domain of model building and model deployment or uh, ML engineer or AI engineer is more focused in terms of model building and data engineer is more focused on engineering the data to make it ready so, so that a model can be built. So overall, this is a very vast area and there are plethora of roles revolving around this whole and one or the other based on, on his skill set fits in one or the other role. Now, coming back to our core structure, uh, uh, as I told earlier, data science is, is not a silo course. This is dependent upon multiple things. So we, we start first with Python. We study Python because that is the foundation of programming, which will be required in data science. Then we study statistics. Then we study machine learning. Then we study deep learning. So this is the first level of course, which we normally cover. In addition to that, there are other aspects, other tools which student can learn. For example, Tableau, for example, Power BI, for example, QuickView. So there are various tools, but uh, uh, at a starting level, uh, if, if you want to enter in the field of data science, you should always start with Python and then gradually mature towards deep learning. And then on top of that, build some high-end implementation in areas of image processing, natural language processing, Etc. So just to give you a brief on what normally we cover, so we start with Python programming introduction, where we talk about data types, operations in Python, various types of data types in Python, how a loops function, what is uh, the functions in Python, how find handling happens, what are the object-oriented uh, concepts, uh, and how do we implement, for example, abstraction, for example, inheritance, etc. Then regular expressions, and then using these we learn couple of modules of python which enables you to do statistical activities this goes in sync with the statistics part of it where we actually study 
a good amount of statistics, descriptive statistics, um, sample and population statistics, probability distribution function, normal distribution, Gaussian distribution, Z score, central limit theorem, then hypothesis testing and uh, chi testing, correlation, covariance, etc. So we study statistics and then we use Python and statistics and then learn some uh, Python modules, which helps you to do statistics in a very easy way. And then on top of that, we learn some visualization techniques, which enables you to draw beautiful graphs and do beautiful EDA or exploratory data analysis using Python. Once we are done with the first phase of it, then we move to the advanced stage of where we start first with machine learning. So in machine learning, we um, do all the classical techniques of machine learning, starting from uh, regression to classification to clustering, and then some uh, less known techniques, for example, um, association rule learning, which is more of a foundation of uh, data. So after mach learning machine learning, we, we actually graduate towards deep learning, which is a neural network based implementation where we study what is artificial neural network, what how it can be implemented. And then convolutional neural network, which is more about image processing and how do we process image, how do we classify images, and then gradually move towards some high end implementation of a recurrent neural network implementing natural language processing using a neural network and a bit of uh, transfer learning of for computer vision where you actually use your pre-trained model and then classify some other things and a bit on recommended systems and generative adversarial network. So this is what we generally cover as a part of um, our whole data science curriculum, but there is certainly a scope where we customize based on student needs and demands. When you can always go ahead and record your videos, you can always get the recording from our end also. And whatever we teach about, everything will be there on a GitHub link where, which will be available for you even after your course gets completed, you can always access that GitHub and then uh, see through the code, all the materials, whatever we discuss in class, everything will be there on GitHub, which you can refer anytime, even after completion of your uh, whole course. In terms of projects, so there is a wide uh, options for projects to be done. So these are some uh, indicative projects we cover. Along with that, students are interested in doing some specific type of project. We, we try to cover those also. So starting from an exploratory data analysis, we, where you actually explore the data and then get something out of it to a high end implementation of image classification, where, where you actually classify the image, maybe it is a flower or object detection also. So it depends upon what the student is interested on. And we, based on the student's interest and based on what he, what is there in the market, what is trending in the market, we try to cover a couple of projects. So basically one or two projects, which is more Python based or more uh, EDA based, couple of projects in machine learning and two, three projects in deep learning. So we try to cover around four to five projects, but there are students who have also completed around eight projects, nine projects, depending upon the skill set and interest. So it, it is more student driven, but we try to cover at least four or five projects so that they have a good amount of hands-on experience in area. They're uh, prepared for interview, some interview questions. I will be giving them a question bank where uh, we'll have the most frequently asked uh, interview questions and then um, above all, Chroma would also be helping them from placement discussion perspectives or whatever is required. So this is whole uh, a brief on uh, what we cover out of our data science curriculum and what we um, teach to students, what is the whole scope of data science. And that's all. So thank you for the demo. You can always reach out to Chroma facilitators who would help you to understand this and give you details on it. Thank you. Please make sure you like our video and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss any notification by us for any further videos.